friends and neighbors, this is Rena Bunting, and I like to talk about how to leave your toxic or narcissistic relationship with grace and dignity. The reason why I talk about this is because I didn't do that. I met my narcissistic ex-husband tit for tat during our separation and divorce, and it lasted four years. I wasn't going to lay down my weapons, and he definitely didn't lay down any of his. The edge that he had on me was that um, because of his personality conflicts, he had the ability to not enter the divorce or separation with empathy. I became the true enemy to him, and he proceeded as such. He did some horrible, horrible things to me, and that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is what do you do when they do horrible things to you? How is your relationship with your ex right now? Are you bartering? Are you begging? Are you pleading? Are you vengeful? Are you keying? Are you calling? Are you trying to find their people? Are you cyber stalking them? Are you stalking them? Stop! Stop doing those things. Right now, we are thinking about ourselves and we are starting the healing process. You cannot heal while you are attacking. If you're in a war and you're hurt and you're still fighting, you can't get medical help. You got to take a break and live to fight another day. So don't operate in vengeance. It's going to come back on you. It's not just a karmatic thing. It's a bottom line thing. If you go after people, odds are they're coming for you too. And in a divorce, and a separation, you don't know that person anymore. That's not the spouse that you were with. So you can't predict their next move and they can't predict theirs. The best thing is to step away. Give yourself some time to get your head together and figure out exactly who's looking back at you in that mirror. I did some things that I shouldn't have done. I didn't do a lot of, you know, classic uh, scaring off the girlfriends and things like that. But I made sure I was a presence in his life. And the thing that I do that people hate the most is I text. I text some shit. And believe me, when you pop open that text, you're going to see what I want you to see first. I am probably world renowned for my mean texts now. And because of that, people don't read any of them anymore. And that's not really what I wanted to do. That's not where I wanted to go. I didn't want to be invisible in my text. I wanted to make my point. Let your point make themselves. You know how to make a point? Don't do anything. Let the point make itself. I want to help you simplify your breakup. I want to help you simplify your healing. And one of the things that you need to do is not be in some kind of a game. This is not a game. This is your life. And you need to pick yourself up off the floor. Right now, you're still focusing on booting up your boots. You're still focusing on tying up your laces and getting those boots on for this next part of your journey. Don't do mean things. And some of the things that I did, like cyber stalking him and stuff, yeah, maybe there was a place for that. And I'm glad that I know what I know because I know what I know what I know what I know. But maybe not in the beginning. Maybe in the beginning, maybe we should just sit and be mindful. Maybe we should find the now. Maybe we should find that present moment that we've been avoiding because we haven't wanted to face what's happening in our lives and in our relationship. Maybe it's time to just be still. You know how musicians say when they play that it's not just the note that comes out of the instrument or their mouth that makes the music, it's the silences in between? That's the way it is in real life too. It's the silences in between. You have to learn to live in those silences. It's a part of the fabric of life. The silences are just as important, if not more important sometimes than the notes that are being played from the instrument. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to do anything. There's nothing you have to do. The only thing you have to do is keep on breathing. And reach down, grab a shoelace, entertain the idea, button up those bootstraps and getting ready for tomorrow. But today, just keep on breathing. Keep on trying to feel what you're feeling, feel the wind, feel the grass under your feet. Make it a point to go and touch your furniture. Touch it, feel the wood, feel the cold in the fridge. Those are small, small, minute forms of meditation. And, and, and basically meditation is just controlling your thoughts. Don't live in your horrible, horrible, terrifying nightmare. That nightmare was last night and today is the new day. So you got to shake it off and not be a part 
of the negativity, of not be a part of the fabric that is your horrible nightmare. Does that make any sense? So really what we're focused on right now is just, oh God, this happened and we're not being vengeful. I think the worst thing that I did is I chuckle, but it makes me sick to my stomach. I sent my husband at the time, about a year and a half into our separation, I sent him a dick pic of my rebound. I don't care if your spouse loves you or hates you now, you were with them and some kind of a intimacy and, and your rebound doesn't belong in that. And what a horrible, disgusting thing for me to do. There you go. I own it. I've apologized for it. I could never make that up to him when he opened that. Why would, I wouldn't want to see that. That would stay with me forever. Don't do things like that. You know, that point alone made my healing last like another year. Cause I kept flashing back to me doing that and what that must've felt like. I wish I didn't have that. I wish I didn't have that memory of my behavior to flash back on so that I could see my own shame instead of seeing the good things that I need to grasp in life to grab onto so that I can pull myself out of my miserable hole. All that vengeful stuff is just take your mind off of what's happening and you're in pain. Pain, anger is a mixture of pain and sadness. Just use common sense, use common sense. And sit on some of this shit. If you decide you want to go do something extreme, please sit on it. Give yourself three days. Do something different. Do a burning ceremony. Do something else. No matter what you do, if you're a kind person and you're not the narcissist, be you. Stay you. Don't be them. Be you. Be an example. Be an example of the person that they lost. Be an example of what they're missing out on. Be who they miss. That is your revenge. Friends and neighbors, my name is Rena Bunting, and I talk about how to leave toxic relationships with grace and dignity. And I also teach people to gather the tools that they need to build their own boat of self-love so they can row merrily down the stream of life to the life that they always wanted. Not just a, okay, I'm glad I'm here kind of thing, but that's what I want. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to row my boat. I'm going to go get me that. Nobody's going to get it for you, just you. So, what's in your toolbox? If you like what I'm saying, like, subscribe, and share so that we can get these messages out and help other people that wish that they were dead rather than understanding that this could be the dawning of the most beautiful day of their lives.